Uh, so on a less weird note, got you a present. What is this? This, my friend, is T-Pain's birthday show. Oh, this is phenomenal, man. Yeah, only the world's most elite few can gain entry into T-Pain's intimate reading of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. That's my favorite Poe. Oh, no way, dude, me too. N no way, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> dude, see, we're bonding. Nice. How'd you get a ticket to this place? Um, you know, just uh, think of it as a way of me saying thanks for uh, staying with you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, show starting. Art. T Pay. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. on the film. Super excited to have you guys with us. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Ghost Maze in a second, but I do want to say congratulations. Also, you recently celebrated 11 years at Smosh, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, 11 we're years, guys. 10 days ago. Yeah. Wow. That it's, is incredible. Yeah, we I should think. be dead now. Yeah. Say that again? We should be dead now. Yeah, well, uh, close to it at least, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so, did you guys do anything special for the celebration? Was there a big party? Um, a we tweeted, thanks. That's good. Yeah. We might have given each other a high five. High five. We're like, yeah. yo, did it. 11 years. Yeah. Was it thanks or was it THX? Was it abbreviated? I just did like T-H-X-G-U-I-S. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Is there an emoji selection yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. all day. All day. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, uh, sincerely, I think that's a huge thing. And what I love about you guys when I was uh, uh, you know, a longtime fan, but also Smosh, it kind of reminds me of, it's one of the great internet like empires. I think of like Rooster Teeth and those guys who started off with their shorts. Or you think of like even Chris Hardwick and Nerdist and, and how like that's evolved into this big uh, empire. Was that, that couldn't have possibly been the vision from day one, was it? Because you guys are massive now and it's incredible. No, we just yeah. we just love to make each other laugh, yeah. um, and we started making videos, and we're like, oh my god, other people like this, and they're laughing with us, and yeah. not at us. It was it was really weird. There might have been some laughing at us. Okay, there was probably was a, a lot of bit. that actually. Yeah, yeah. It's a good if day. you've seen our first videos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, most emotionally moving performances of the Mortal Kombat theme song that I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you. It was pretty incredible. It took a lot to get into the. Um, you know, the, the spirit of uh, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> well, to truly test one's might, you have to, right? You have right. to go that far and get yeah. involved. They don't just say test your might for no reason. Right. <laughs> There's a story there, and I think you guys told it beautifully. Yeah. Um, to that end, who are some of your early comedy influences when you guys were starting this out and doing this? Uh, we loved South Park. We watched that all the time. Um, Lonely Island, I, th I think we kind of were watching them before they started blowing up on yeah. SNL. Yeah, they didn't. When we started watching Lonely Island, they weren't on SNL yet. Yeah. Uh, they did like Just Two Guys and the Bing Bong Brothers. Like they're like good, yeah. old, like OG YouTube when yeah. people were still doing, a lot of people were still doing sketch comedy at that time. Is, is it weird to still think of those things? Like as you were saying, and I was like, oh, classics. It's like, those are classics now. Like does that ever, like th that passage of time that's happened so fast, does it ever kind of like blow your mind? Yeah, it doesn't even feel like any time has passed. Yeah, at all. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, we started 11 years ago. I remember being 11 years old and being like, wow. So much of my life has happened right now, but like <laughs> it's only been 11 years. You're a really introspective 11 year old. You're, <laughs> yeah. There's so much ahead of me. <laughs> like, um, it's, it's funny, you guys mentioned Lonely Island. I totally got that vibe uh, watching uh, some of the older stuff and some of the newer stuff too. Also, there, you kind of sit in this place between SNL and Mad TV, I think, like with right. kind of the vibe, which is a lot of fun. Is there ever a discussion about that and the tone that you're going for, or is it just really what makes you guys laugh? I mean, we we like to do what what makes us laugh. Um, it worked it worked in the beginning, and it's and it's worked ever since. Like whatever we find funny and whatever we're passionate about, we we just want to pursue that. Um, and as long as people keep enjoying what we enjoy, then then that's great. Well, 
That, and that's fantastic. Uh, I was going to say that you guys were recently uh, dubbed by Time Magazine the SNL of the Internet, which when you read that, wait, what was your what was your reaction to that? That, that sort of. I that think comment? that was about like 2006 or 2007 when they said that, and it's kind of funny because now we've done a live show was which was say. SNL style, a full hour long set of live skits, and that was really interesting because it was in front of a live audience and we'd never done that before, yeah. and we had to do a whole skit in just one take, which was really interesting. I loved, uh, I thought you guys nailed it, it was fantastic, they're um, trying to remember at the end the alien sketch that you guys oh, did. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Whip. Oh man, that was fantastic. Yeah. Was there something uh, that, you, what, what did you guys kind of learn from that process, sort of a different approach to this thing that you've been doing for 10, 11 years? I mean, I think that we learned that there's still room to evolve and try new things all the time. I think something that's kept us going is trying new things constantly. Um, a lot of people we've seen from the internet, at least when we first got started, have kind of fizzled out, and I think it's because they kind of just kept doing what they were doing from the start. Well, yeah, that kind of speaks to, to what I was thinking about earlier, is like, you look at a lot of these people that, that, that start on the internet, and they grow and they grow, but they don't necessarily evolve or expand the way that you guys have, and, and you've done all these crazy things, this live show, uh, were there any sort of crazy, like, 30 Rock-esque last-minute live, oh, my God, we're cutting this and adding this moments? Or was it like, did you guys have it really locked down? Well, you... we really did not want to screw up because yeah. it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was our first time. So, so we took it, like, we took it very seriously. We're like, okay, we're going to rehearse. We're just going to rehearse the hell out of this, make sure that we don't, you know, piss ourselves on stage, basically. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think we went pretty much without a hitch. Uh, and I don't think it could have gone too much better. Uh, I'm pretty proud of, of how we pulled it off uh, because I, my memory is just real bad. So <laughs> I'm surprised I remembered all my lines. But apparently if you do something, because we rehearse it like 40 times. Yeah. Apparently if you rehearse something 40 times, you can remember it pretty well. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Still know if I know all the planets. Well, that's why, that's why we, you guys don't usually see this, but we actually rehearsed this conversation about 37 times. So I'm that's feeling a little messing we up We didn't yet? hit the 40. I still yeah. miss yeah. That, that talk about the great whale. Yeah. yeah. Like we were going to get that, to that. We night. were supposed well, to open with that. We, we started that. off and with the sperm just, whale and it changed. And I. Well, that's because I giggled when you said sperm yeah, whale. Yeah, I know. That's we right. had to change and it. We had to stop the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. That's my fault, honestly. That's me. Should we start from the top? Are we, we come back in? Yeah, yeah, I tell you what, everybody leave. We're going to reload the audience. Yeah. Was that T-Pain that yeah. you were playing at the beginning? Can we roll that again? We, yeah. We're going to roll that. Okay. We're going to do that again. Okay. Um, How great was T-Pain, though, right? T-Pain is incredible. We're going to get to that. I do okay. want to get into the T-Pain. He didn't even say anything in the clip. <laughs> he doesn't need to, honestly. Well, you saw, he you says saw the plenty movie, in the film. I've, I got to yeah. say, but... Even if it was just that, it, he's just his presence is amazing, and I do want to get to that. But uh, there, there were a couple of things I, I just wanted to tidy up because it was speaking of like cool people that you got to work with. On your last movie, uh, Smash the Movie, you guys got to work with Michael Ian Black, which I mean that's that's sketch comedy royalty right there. He is there. a treasure. Yeah, tell me about him. What was that like? Uh, just to have him, just to be in his presence and work with him. We had him here a little bit, and he's 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 awesome. Yeah, he was amazing. Uh, it was great to have somebody that, that's just a natural comedian, natural improviser. Uh, he came with a bunch of his own stuff, and we ended up using a lot of that. Uh, he's just really good. <laughs> it's funny. When you said he came with his own stuff, and we, it took me a second to catch up and realize you meant material. I thought he like, oh, showed up with like his own clothes. I hope you don't mind. I brought my own makeup. <laughs> um, just, just works for me. Yeah, works my for travel room. bag with my vanity light. He's so pro. He brought all his own stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, did you guys, when you were going into the live thing, did you call anybody up for advice or anything like that? Did you reach out to Michael or anybody be like, hey, we're doing this crazy thing? Any words of wisdom or anything like that? Or No, but we should have. <laughs> we really should have. Yeah, I, we didn't really... We didn't really didn't connect with the outside world much during that time. Yeah. We we're just locked away in a basement. But I think, rehearsing. but I think you know, we we wanted to do what what our idea of a live show was. Yeah. Um, so we, we bring we something brought, unique. Yeah. So we brought you know the sort of smosh flavor to live sketch. Comedy. What flavor is that? Mm, a little spicy. Yeah. Is it similar to like the Airheads white one? It's the mystery flavor. You don't. It's know like the it mystery is. one, but it's also got chili powder on it. Uh, yeah. A little like <laughs> it sounds like gross, it. but you're like I kind of like it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, I think it worked. The isolation thing was probably a sound technique because it had a great vibe to it. It did feel very smosh, but it also had that, that fun sort of authenticity of a live production. So kudos uh, on that. Uh, so work with Michael Ian Black. Second movie uh, now is coming. Ghostmates, super excited. Uh, how are you guys doing? Have you done a lot of press? Are we, where are we in the junket? Are we the first spot? You, you are the, 
Numero Second number dose. dose. Yeah. Nice, nice. Who's so number we're one? still fresh. We don't we don't hate everything. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. Say, you're still telling them that it's the same yeah. stories and you're okay with it. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, how, so so you guys like in the process? I mean, you're you're not new to this. You've been doing it for a little while. Are you kind of in the in the rhythm? It's it's fun for you. You enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, this this process was really great because we had so much creative control over it. YouTube allowed us to pretty much do whatever we wanted. Um, for the movie. Yeah, for the movie. For this yeah. interview, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, like, we, when we wrote the first draft, we sent it to YouTube, as you do with a yeah. studio, and they gave us two notes, which is crazy, because usually, like, with a movie studio, they're like, no, change this. You need a new character. This guy needs right, to right. love this girl. And blah, blah, blah. But because they gave us so much freedom, we were excited. We're just super excited to work on the movie throughout the entire process, and I think it shows. And you guys were working with Ryan, who, your writer, who's worked with yeah. a ton of stuff with you before. Yeah. Yeah. Was there uh, was there more of the Smosh family uh, involved on this one than the first one? Because I was looking at uh, Smosh the movie, like uh, just kind of going through the IMDb page and stalkering, and I was trying to find those connections. One, very cool that Bill from Bill and Ted directed the first movie. That was oh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I felt like I was seeing, and maybe I'm wrong, I saw some more connections to the Smosh family on the second one. Is that the case, or is it just... Yeah, this one we kept a little bit more in-house. It was yeah. mostly just us working with Ryan, who we've worked with since 2012? 2011? Something like that, yeah. He's, he's been our longtime sort of writing partner. Cool. He has a little more experience writing features, so when we came to do Ghostmates, we wanted to sort of keep it in-house yeah. and and make it more for, for ourselves. Does that change the vibe on the whole project, on the set? Does that change anything at all as a whole? What does that sort of yeah. bring to it for you guys? I think it just kept us more excited because it was something that we're more close to, and we got to work through the entire process from outlining to you know final feature script. Well, it's a lot of fun. Uh, as I was saying, I got a chance to see it, and I really enjoyed it. I think it's great, too. Fans are going to love it because uh, it, it's a chance to sort of see you guys in this this narrative that's completely separate from the real world. Uh, you're playing these characters. You get to watch you guys kind of become friends. All these fun things happen. And there is also kind of an air uh, of improvisation going on there. Do you guys play around a lot on set and, and, and sort of come up with stuff in the moment, too? Because you... You can see some of that. I yeah, think. I, I think I think my favorite like three moments from the movie are all improvised. That's usually um, yeah, yeah, and the director Months of planning, and then the thing that happens in the moment is the thing you love most, right? The director Jack Robbins gave us a ton of freedom to do that, and he was even shouting off stuff. He's like, "Oh, improvise something there. Talk about this." And it was it was Sometimes a ton. He of just throw in a random word. Yeah. He's like, "Just say that." And we're like, "Okay." And, and the, the best part is he would come up to us and just whisper in our ear. He's like, "Don't talk about the the remote." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> Uh, it's like he wants to surprise the other person. Yeah. I like that. That, yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, how many uh, hours of B-roll footage do you have of you being possessed? Because there's a moment where you go full Jim Carrey windmill arms, I think, which is super impressive. Uh, it seems like you had a lot of fun doing that, coming up with that. That was my hardest scene to do, and yeah. that was the last thing we shot in the entire movie. And I was just nervous about it the whole time because it... It's, a, it's like a lot of lines, and I'm doing full body stuff, and I was sore for like four days after that. Dude, it's the definition of going for it. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, and and yeah. he gets, and he he gets possessed. He went for it. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and he yeah. gets possessed earlier in the movie, and um, he swings his arm, and he's like hitting stuff off the table, yeah. and he hit it so hard that he like cut his hand open. I, and I just kept going. I'm like, I'm going for that Oscar right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm going Leonardo DiCaprio I was going to say, right you're now. doing the DiCaprio. You're just yeah. going to keep working the yeah. scene. <laughs> <laughs> you walk over, smear your blood on his face. Like, oh, we're just going to yeah. keep I doing this. I should have done that. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, the only well, thing preventing me from that There Oscar. goes our chance at the Oscar. No, I know. I'm sorry I didn't smear blood on your face. <laughs> Next time, buddy. Next you're time, smearing please. smearing blood. The director please leans you? in. If you ask nicely. Okay. You're smearing the blood. director leans in. He's like, say albatross. You're like, what is happening right now? What has this film become? Uh, okay. Let's, let's dig into it, man. T-Pain, how, where did this come from? How did he get involved? He is the heart and soul of this film. It's <laughs> the only reason I want to do this interview is to talk about T-Pain. That's why we're honest. all here is to talk about T-Pain. That's why anybody's anywhere today. So yeah. how did, how did uh, it come about? It actually started like a year before we started working on the movie. Uh, his manager saw a couple of our videos and he, he hit us up and he's like, hey, if you ever want T-Pain to be in a video, like he's willing to get weird. And we're like, what a great like, pitch. We're like, what yeah. the hell does that yeah, mean? He, yeah, he literally said he's willing to get weird. Just let you know. I had to look up the definition of the word weird to make sure I was understanding this correctly. Yeah. What a great call. To yeah. get. <laughs> so so we, we, we pitched a couple things to them, and it never quite worked out. And then while we were writing the movie, we wanted this one sort of character. And we're like, we're like well, we, we probably won't get him. 
But let's just write in T-Pain for now. We're like, let's write in the most perfect character <laughs> for this who, role. What was your backup after you wrote everything? If you we had get no backup. No we're it. like, no if idea. this doesn't work out, we're all screwed. In. But all we're in on T-Pain. Yeah. yeah. So we had T-Pain written on there and everything from, from the very beginning. And, and we're like, well, you know, it's just it's a placeholder because we're probably, probably not going to get him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we ended up getting him, and he was amazing. Like, he, he blew us out of the water. I Did was he? nervous before he came on set because, we, you know, you don't audition T-Pain. You're no. like, I just want T-Pain. That's you don't it. have to audition. There's one T-Pain. So that's the like, one, and we want it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're like, how is he going to act? Is he, you know, how great is he going to be on camera? But he came in. He blew us out of the water, really. Yeah. He made us look really bad. Did he... Um was there a reaction to the script or anything or no? You sent it to him, he got it, and you were like, yep, he'll be there at this time. And you're just sitting there kind of waiting for T-Pain to That's happen. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's kind of the only way it should happen, right? Yeah. That's pretty incredible. And uh, he also came with his own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, you can look up the word stuff. Super professional. Weird stuff, too, because he was ready for he was real. He's weird. willing to get weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he conveyed that the moment he walked in the room. Did he, um, so he's, he's totally game, he's having a great time. Was there a lot of improvisation for Oh my God, he brought so much content. Almost all the stuff that you see in there. There's a bit where he, he's like saying all this stuff about why he had a great life and all the yeah. things that he has and that he's done. And that was all improvised, all the what? stuff you see in there. One of my great, one of my favorite lines is he goes, oh man, my dog's up here. It's just yeah. like, there's all these weird non sequiturs that yeah. you don't expect T-Pain. One of the great things to think about T-Pain is that there is sort of like this public perception of like T-Pain. You know, he wrote that song years ago. He's in love with a stripper. He's the auditune <laughs> guy, right? All that stuff. But um, but he did, uh, I don't know if you guys saw when he did the Tiny Desk performance for NPR. Oh yeah, that was yeah, good. It's like, the you were there? I was there. You were physically in you, the room? And were I brought the my tiny own desk? stuff. Were you, were you playing Tiny Desk? Were you? Maybe. Maybe. That's look, look closely next time. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Uh, but what I love about that video, and I think your film does the same thing, is like it's this new facet to the diamond that is T-Pain. Right. Like you just get to see this other side of him. That's that's just like a lot of fun and really funny. Uh, so has he seen the film? Does he have a response to it? What does he think about uh, he it? He kind of stays quiet. You know, he didn't talk to us before showing up on set. But then when he's on set. Bam, blew us out of the water. I think we're going to see him at the premiere, and he's just going to blow us out of the water again. Was there like a Daniel Day-Lewis thing where like he was in character? He doesn't talk when the cameras are off. He's in T-Pain mode. I wouldn't no. know what's out of character and what's in character <laughs> yeah. T-Pain. Like he's, he's just, he's just T-Pain. He's, he's so fun. He's great. He's great. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to go to audience Q&A in just a second. I have one more, just one little question, because I thought this was really fun. You guys got to be a voice in the Angry Birds movie. Yeah. That was yeah. cool. How'd that, that what was, was that like? How'd you get that involved was, with that? That was so fun. Yeah. I realized that I really love doing voices. And yeah. yeah. And well, you guys mess with animation almost from the beginning. Like That's always kind of been a part of your, your, like, your lifeblood. And what yeah, you yeah. We, yeah. We've done animation before. And <laughs> we, we've done... we did our own animations for a little while. Oh, Ooh. yeah. We don't, we don't talk about <laughs> we don't those. We don't talk about that. Those are some pretty we were, bad... We were uh, 13 years old. That's some so... pretty terrible content right there. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk crap about that. <laughs> that's uh, great. The Newgrounds days? Is that what we're talking that was, about? I yep. did stuff on Newgrounds. Yeah. You did stuff, some I did stuff some stuff on Newgrounds. Yeah. Do you guys yep. remember Newgrounds? Stick Anybody? Is there people? Yeah. Oh, man. That was that was pre-YouTube. That was like, oh, there was some... That was the golden age I'll tell you of what, internet don't, weird don't go stuff. Back there. Yeah. Don't go back there Didn't thinking it's going to be great. Because what not, you thought was great when you were 15 is... <laughs> not, I haven't watched a good. Strong Bad cartoon in a very long okay, time. Okay, Strong Bad that holds up. That holds up? I would yeah. hope it does. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. But you were saying you guys did you, were, you did some weird... Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, love, we love doing voice acting for, yeah. for cartoons and all that stuff. So Angry Birds was like a super cool opportunity, and you just got to be a, a bird and... <laughs> How Living often do you get dream, to be a bird, right? you yeah. know? My voice was like this, like I was going through puberty. I don't know. Yeah. Did, did you have to go through one of those moments where, like, for just an hour, they were like, give me, like, another annoyed grunt? <laughs> ah, a like, little bit. They, yeah. had, they had us do a lot of stuff that didn't make it in the movie. Yeah. They were like, hey, be sad, make sounds, grunting sound. I don't even know what was in there. I don't even know what is my grunt sound <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Any, anyone you can replicate. actually spot there's like there's a moment in the in the movie where it's like a random like crowd scene and there's all these birds talking and I hear Anthony's voice like out of like everybody. <laughs> well, my voice like, is so in weird. It's like, yeah, get him. And, like, <laughs> and it's just like in the mix of like everyone else like screaming and stuff like oh, Anthony. That was Anthony. <laughs> it was right there, it was right there. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, real quick, so we're going to turn it over, but I also, I forgot, uh, when uh, Ghostmates, when does it come out? Uh, this is super exciting. It's We're on the cusp. Let's take this one together. Okay. I'll say half. Okay. I'll say, well, wait, you want to say it together? Like per, per syllable? Let's, let's try to... Let's, let's, do, try to, let's do it per syllable. You can watch it on YouTube. Red. On. Dis. 
December is one word. You but I said you syllable. Say I said I said syllable. Okay. M Burr. Fourteenth. Yeah, make sure fourteenth is together. It's not yeah. just four. Yeah, yeah. Fourteenth. Yeah. So you can watch on YouTube Red on December fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it over to the audience. We got some questions. First one. Hey, guys. I was wondering if you had any formal comedy training and if you feel like you've encountered any older people who are like jealous or resentful of you because you're so super successful from like your own mediums. <laughs> That's such a good question. Uh, we, we originally had no aspirations to, <laughs> to do acting or comedy. We or just like writing. to make each other laugh and that's really just what we kept doing at the beginning. Yeah, so, so we kind of fell into the, the YouTube thing on accident and we found that we just enjoyed it so much. Um, and we, we so wouldn't we, want to do anything else. Yeah, so we started, uh, we took a few acting classes, a few improv classes and writing classes, but other than that, not much training. And for your other question, yeah, I think there's a few people that uh, are a little, I don't know if they're jealous or what, but they're like, oh, YouTube or the internet, that's, well, that's, you're, you're, that's not real. Right, because if you think about, I was thinking about this earlier, I think about a lot of things in the past. It, this one in particular, <laughs> If, uh, if you go back like 10, 15 years, right, uh, people that were in movies were like, well, I'll never do TV. If you're in TV, that's below me, right? right. And people that were in TV, if they made it to movies, they made the jump. And that's all kind of blurred together now, right? And you True. see a very similar thing happening with yeah. like TV and film people being like, well, that's internet. You don't, I don't know what that's all about. And I it's like, it, no, it's all creative. It's all entertainment. It's all the same thing. Yeah, but exactly. You guys are you're running into that a little bit, I guess, as you're navigating this world taking over everything. Yeah, I think I think that it's it has more to do with just a, a misunderstanding of, of the platform because I, I've caught myself saying similar things about about maybe somebody that'd be on Vine. I'd be like, oh like who wants to watch the but then I but I realized like there's there's like people legitimately watch that and they legitimately like it. Like there's a reason why it's being watched. It's yeah. it's for not necessarily me and I found that, you know, while I was complaining about people talking, you know, maybe, you know, talking down on our content, I realized I was doing the same to those people. And it's just a, it's just a misunderstanding. Like, can I, can I submit another theory? Can I, you're getting old. That's yeah, what that I'm, is. I'm just getting crotchety. That's what it is. <laughs> He's getting grumpy. What That's all that is. Musically, what is this garbage? We're just old people now. It happens yeah, to all of us. Yeah, That's what happens. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think that there is a lot more meshing, you know, blurring the lines between the different types of content now. I think people are starting to respect YouTube and internet creators in the same way they're doing other stuff, and I think that's really good for all of us. Well, I think you guys are doing a lot of work to, to lend that credibility. I mean, uh, 22, 23 million subscribers on the proper Smosh channel alone. I mean, you guys have a massive, massive audience. There's a reason. It's, it's entertaining. It's good stuff. It's just as entertaining as anything else that's out there. Um, more questions. Audience, what do we got? Hey guys, thank you hey. for being here. Uh, will, will we see a new food battle video this year? <laughs> Ooh, that is a good question. Um, There's lots of people asking. Usually, we do a food battle a lot every year in the summer. There's a lot of speculation. Uh, let's yeah. just say there's a lot of speculation about that. We haven't said anything about that. Yeah. So for the people that don't know, food battle is a annual thing that that we would do. We've been doing it since 2006, and it's this it's this thing where it's like <laughs> I have a favorite food, and he has a favorite food, and we battle to find out which one can do more everyday tasks than the other. Like, oh, my donut could be a pogo stick. This is why people don't respect us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and we've just done it <laughs> for, for 10 years. And it kind of started as a joke because we were like, let's put 2006 at the end so it sounds intense. Yeah. And then come 2007, people were like, hey, you named it 2006. Where's it 2007? We're like, oh, 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 I guess it's a series now. Yeah, so we just kept it running for forever. Yeah. We're going to keep Ten that answer Ten years vague. of that. Ten years. Yeah. So, you know, the year's not over, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That's right. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Oh, you are wearing a Smosh shirt. I just noticed oh, that. Oh, damn. That were is you in the, amazing. Were you in the lobby earlier? Yeah. woo <laughs> So, hi. So, how different was the movie experience from Smosh the movie? Like, was it a drastic change, or was it just tiny differences? Yeah, I think it was different all throughout the entire process. Uh, this one we had a much bigger hand in. We worked uh, closely with our writer and the outline process all the way up to the, the final script. Um, and this one we also took a different approach. We, we felt like we wanted to evolve a little bit, so we started writing it as more of just a story that we really enjoyed. And then we started trying to find ways to uh, add our brand of comedy to it. 
Yeah, because I think sometimes with, with some comedy movies, they, they focus just on the comedy. Even our and last you, one, we kind of did that. Yeah, and then you always get that sort of response from people that watch those, those kinds of movies. They're like, well, it just felt like one really long, drawn-out sketch. So we really wanted to focus on telling a dramatic story first and then, and then um, putting comedy into it where, wherever we could. Yeah, I think it's a really big evolution for us, and I think you'll, you'll see that when you see it. Yeah, perfect word, evolution. You put them side by side and you can see it. And it is. I think it's a lot of fun. I think fans of Smosh or otherwise, it's a great movie. You guys are going to love it when you get to see it, which is on December 14th. Yes. There we go. Guys, one more time. Please join me in thanking our guest, Anthony Padilla. Thank you. Ian Heacox, co-founders of Smosh. Don't go away. we got a lot more show coming up. <laughs>